Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we are doing our monthly fanfiction reading. So welcome to part two of this video and let's keep going and see what happens with Percy becoming a Christian. Chapter six, Hunted, Percy's point of view. Annabeth and I have been living in the apartment for two weeks and I have already proposed. We're going to, to have a wedding in two months. Meanwhile, we're going to work, living a normal life, which we've wanted for forever and planning the wedding. Our style, usually Aphrodite would be the one to design weddings, but this time we have control over it. We're, blah, who cares? Anyway, off the wedding, Talia had been repeatedly trying to get us to change our minds and go back to camp, which is one of the reasons why camp, as a whole, I guess, isn't invited. They ruin it. Anyways, Annabeth and I have chosen to stay here near my mother to ensure that the camps don't try to hurt them. And we like this place, and we have a large balcony in which Annabeth absolutely loves to make a garden. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, they grow vegetables. After the wedding, Annabeth is going to move into mine, making her room a guest room for my mother's and stepdad's retirement. When the time comes. Right now, I'm at the aquarium, waiting for my next tour thing. Okay, Mr. Jackson, Tally Grace, Nico D'Angelo, and a few others have come to a floor tour. I groaned. How exactly did they find out that I work here? They walked in. It was Talia, Nico, Frank, Hazel, Travis, Katie, Connor, Jason, and Piper. Nine people. Yeah, so much for a few others. I pretended not to know them. Hello, I'm you, tourist. Hello, I'm you, tourist. I, shouldn't this say I'm your tour guide, I guess? I, I don't know. I, I, I've learned to not really expect anything from this fanfic and this author. I'll be taking you through, I checked the paper m the boss gave me, the whole aquarium. Call me Percy, I said smiling, pretending not to mind having that many. You know, usually smaller children come here. They are always fascinated by the animals. I'm surprised people two years younger than me or about my age still come here other than work, of course. Let's start here, a slight shade, pointing to a more empty corridor. There were three doorways which led through the whole aquarium, just starting in different places. So this is a blah blah blah. You know why we're here, Perseus, Talia said, glaring. You already left him alone instead of killing him, so why, why come back? Do I? Please enlighten me. We need to talk. Why? God is with me, I thought, which calmed me down. You need to start thinking straight. You're a demigod, Percy, not someone who's led the wrong way. Nico said, look at me in the eyes as if looking for a weakness. This is the best I felt in years, in my whole life. My mother's at peace, finally happy in marriage, still safe and happy to be raised as Christian. I'm sure she is. I'm sure that two-year-old is very happy to be raised as Christian. I'm happy and for once, normal and Annabeth, the happiest I've seen her. You're simply trying to take what's best for us and putting in force things that only lead you to nothing. What did the gods do to you? Nothing. That's a lie. You know the gods have ruined his life time and time again. Exactly, I said, throwing my hands up. Tyler looked at me in a really look. We saved them. We helped them. We did whatever they wanted and we sacrificed to them. What does that mean? They didn't sacrifice to them. What they gave us? The right to live. How is that a payment for what you did to them? They don't care. They never were there for us as children, nor were they we learned of our heritage. They just asked for something, then disappeared. I saved the Olympians and they just gave me the right to live. Well, they offered you immortality, to be fair. I did something they didn't like. They ignored us for a year. How does that not make me upset? How does not make you upset? Explaining in a dub voice. Hazel looked like she just realized something and then went back to her firm expression. They can't do everything for us. Ancient laws, remember? Don't do the... She hesitated. Look, incident. Suddenly, everything clicked. I understood why he located the gods so much. He had done many quests for them. We had to ask permission to get out of camp. We were like prisoners to a place we go home. Never thought of that. Percy, you must come with us. Take Annabeth with you. Come home, Pepper said gently. Charm speaking me, but it doesn't work on me anymore. I pushed her off. Is he not attracted to her anymore? No way, not abandoning the wedding, I said stubbornly. Wedding? Piper said, yeah, we're having it in two months. I looked her straight in the eye. We didn't invite you. You weren't invited? Hazel squeaked in a small voice. Well, Talia did threaten to kill his younger sister, to be fair. Of course not. You guys would ruin it with your whole you are insane and a traitor thing. I said before anyone could say a word, I added, since you aren't here for a tour, obviously you should pay and get going. Hey, yeah, Jason, you wasted my time. So Percy goes back to the apartment and then he notices a piece of paper in the kitchen counter. It said in red dripping letters, you're hunted. Then chapter seven, God cares. Percy's point of view two months later, oh, the wedding. 
Annabeth and I hadn't met the hunters for three weeks now, nearly a month. I knew this was part of the plan. We wanted our guard down. Well, we both work, have fun, and already have married, so it's good life. <laughs> Other than getting some notes from the hunters time to time, Nico really hates us now. Why can't they just leave us alone? Annabeth and I were making homemade lasagna in the kitchen when we heard a knock. We quickly cut the finished lasagna in the oven and run to the door shouting, Coming! Of course, they shout. We open, surprise, surprise, it was Athena, Poseidon, the Salmon, Athalia, Artemis, Nico. Great. You have to come back, Jason stated. We don't have enough lasagna for all of you guys. You could have told me you were coming, I said. Annabeth laughed. Percy, we don't have the materials and food to make enough. I laughed at that. Artemis looked like we were crazy, which made me laugh more. Now stop with the letters. Annabeth suddenly became serious, her voice becoming much more deadly. See, this is what Jesus did to you, Talia said angrily, slapping Annabeth on the face really hard. Annabeth's eyes rolled up with tears. I glared at them and shut the door, taking Annabeth's side. How dare they come? Heard my wife in an old home. I probably would have wanted to kill them, but I don't. I just don't want them here. I was helping Annabeth when they all appeared inside. How? How? Rage built inside me. I know it's a sin. Calmed myself down. Annabeth was an arrogant or prideful this before because of her flaw. I was glad about that. You must come with us, Talia and Artemis said with their teeth gritted. We'll disown you, Athena said with hate in her voice, visible will. Yes, Poseidon sneered. I had never seen him like that. By the face of Annabeth, neither had she. Obviously, you've seen Poseidon more than she has. You just did, I said, and walked into the kitchen, taking the lasagna out of the oven. It looked really good. Percy, keep your mind in the game. What are you doing? I looked at Annabeth, and a grin broke on her face as she saw the lasagna. She laughed, nearly saying, finally. They are acting like crazy people. There's people out here, like, threatening to murder them and their families, and they're like, oh, this lasagna looks good, and we got to split it. I disown you, Athena beside him muttered at the same time. I disown you. We just shrugged. He had a new father after all. We know who that is. What had he done that he we didn't? I used to last with a pain voice. He didn't force us to do something. He showed love for us, who we are instead of what we did. He didn't blame us. He loves us and cares for us. He doesn't hunt us. I started. That's a good point. He showed kindness when we. I felt broken. He showed me Percy, which is a miracle. He healed us. He gave us joy, which you never did, Annabeth continued, grinning like a mad woman. Why are they crazy? Is this pro-Christianity or anti-Christianity? I can't tell by this point. Okay, okay, stop, Artemis said, exhausted. Sorry, but you're coming with us, she said, and in a second, we were all transported to Olympus. Wow, can someone at least eat in peace? Sue smirked as Artemis, Athena, and Poseidon grew to full size and sat on the thrones. You two are traitors to Olympus. You will be forced to stay in the prison in Olympus, guarded 24-7. Suddenly there was a bright flash, causing everyone to squint. Oh my god, is Jesus gonna come? Oh my god. Suddenly there was a bright flash, causing everyone to squint their eyes. There stood a man with skin that was a darker hue, and his hair uh, was as white as snow color. Is this <laughs> Santa Claus? <laughs> it looked like it had a woolly texture. His eyes were like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished bronze. I straight away knew who it was and Annabeth and I dropped to our knees immediately while the two camps looked as us. Strangely, Jesus smiled. Rise, children. You have risked so much for me. Isn't it kind of blasphemous to insert actual Jesus into your fanfic? Annabeth grinned and turned her head to me and I smiled too. I took her hand and we stood up together. Jesus turned to the gods. You will never harm my children, he said as he took our hands and led us off Olympus the throne room. Zeus looked so angry that he seemed to grow devilish. His usually human form ripped apart, revealing a dark red-brown leather-like skin, his eyes turning nearly broad red, his teeth forming like vampires, just more like a snake's length long, like he could drink our blood too. Bad, like wings spread out from his back and his hands and feet turned into claws. The clothes turned into dirty, ragged ones. Yet ones that would usually make you bow, he hissed as the rest did the same. They all turned into dot 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 demons. Yes, I'll call them demons. Hestia's usually kind form turned into one that would want to kill us. Annabeth and I backed off a little behind Jesus. Let's finish this then. Jesus is going to fight. The Olympians, which have turned into demons. I am, honestly, I'm enjoying this. We have three chapters left, demigods. We're almost there. I've been reading out loud for like 40 minutes. 
honestly, this fanfic's worth it. So let's go. Chapter 8 forms. This is the big fight, as we all know, between Jesus and the gods of Olympus. Seeing the gods in such forms frightened me, but I just stood my stand with Annabeth, whom I, whom looked scarier than ever. Did Annabeth look scarier than ever or did she look more scared than ever? It nearly scared me. Poseidon, or the demon now, stood up and ran to me, claws out, as I saw the rest of the seven, Nico, Talia, Reina, and Clarice stare in horror. I think they might be turning Christian. Suddenly a woman appeared in front of me. Oh my god, the Virgin Mary. She wore a white dress with beige boots and a golden armor. She was pale, really white, and had a natural orange hair, which ran down from her shoulders, just touched her shoulder braids. Wait, who is this? It changed from dark to light orange from the top of the scalp. She drew a long sword and blocked the strike from Poseidon. Metallic, light, gray-looking wings sprouted from her back as a man appeared next to her. Oh, I think they're just angels. He had white clothing, gold armor, and beige boots like the woman next to him, but had dark brown hair, which transitioned to beige as it neared its ends. But we don't care. I quickly ducked as an arrow from Apollo flew at me. Annabeth did a backflip to avoid a kick to meet her in the face. I grinned at her as a good job, which she quickly returned. I jumped over two hunting knives and punched Poseidon in the face before he could harm the angel who helped me previously. He smiled and nodded at me as he passed me a sword and we started fighting him together. Once I pierced Poseidon in the heart, the angel turned to me and nodded his thanks. I'm Hadronio. He nodded and flew off at Hestia, who now looked crazy. I attacked Hades with Annabeth in s in seven and a half minutes. We killed him just as I killed Poseidon with Hadronio. Why? Why such a specific time frame? The beautiful angel, her name is Aloa, she said, groaning at her broken leg, which Hades caused. What? Hadronio is the other guy angel, I corrected myself. She smiled brightly. But we were soon cut off by the screeches of Artemis. I turned and quickly jumped in front of Annabeth as Artemis was jumping on her. She clawed my stomach badly, but I kicked her and I drew my sword to pierce her, only for her to rip it out of my hand and stab my stomach. I coughed up blood as I continued trying to protect Annabeth. Suddenly she ripped in half as if she were an invisible force ripping her to shred. I saw Jesus standing, his hands raised, glaring at the spot where Artemis was. I smiled my thanks and saw that my stab wound and Annabeth's foot were healed. I nodded my thanks and we were both charged at Hephaestus, the last standing god, along with Athena. We quickly defeated Hephaestus, but Athena was quite wise, even as a demon. But Jesus soon destroyed her, as things go. I fell on the floor and laid down, exhausted. Annabeth did the same. I was probably looking like a madman smiling like that, but who cares? Yeah, I'm convinced Annabeth and Percy are crazy at this point. Annabeth looked at me and laughed. I shook my head and put my hand to where my heart and showed mock hurt, which made her laugh harder. I saw Talia and Nico look shocked. Nico looked distraught, staring at the massive golden dust on the floor where Hades was. You just killed the gods, Jason started bluntly, not to mention all their parents. But that's fine, because the next chapter is called Forgiving Chapter 9. We're almost there. Talia's point of view. I saw how the gods were their forms and all, I felt guilt and regret build up immediately. Annabeth and Percy were right all along? Well, they never claimed they were demons. They just said they weren't gods. Jesus said something to the two and flashed away. Boop, Jesus out. I walked up to them just as they started to turn to the exit. Annabeth, Percy, we're sorry, we didn't know. I started saying, but Percy just gave me a, are you kidding me look? I forgive you, Talia, and y'all guys, and y'all guys. But I can't build a friendship with someone who just destroyed Annie. Percy said as Annabeth nodded, but mouthed Percy when he said Annie. If someone understands what just happened in this paragraph, please explain this to me down in the comments. Sorry, I whispered, shaking my head as I looked at Nico, who was paler than a sheet of white paper. That's how people describe me sometimes. But, but you can't blame us for believing our parents. Yeah, we can. What did they ever do to you, huh? Nothing. They just are your parents, gave you powers, and so on. So basically nothing. They just gave you life and gave you superpowers. So nothing. But what did they do personally, which isn't something to do with genes or DNA, he asked. I looked down. Zeus so turned me into a tree to help me in the other two wars. That was to use me. Artemis just needed a good extra leader to the hunt. She never cared. Tears vaulted in my eyes. Never thought about it, I whispered as I saw Carmen's eyes turn red and the sword fly into his face. Percy glared at the spot where Chiron was. 
who just killed Chiron and what was Chiron doing there? They never mentioned Chiron being there. And a stab through the face is a bit mean. He was so kind, I said louder. Sure, planned deaths, but Chiron taught us that. He was so kind, like a father, Nico added. Yes, but I was a friend. You could have just left us alone after we chose a different path, but you literally tried hurting us. I would have been still full on trust friend with you guys if you didn't try killing us or hurting us. That's a lie. You said you wanted to cut off all contact with them and to not try to find you. Some people just want less manipulation in their life. What the hell is this dialogue? Percy's right. We could have stayed friends or you could have just gone and ignoring us. But you chose to physically and mentally hurt us. We understand you choosing the gods or your parents over us and someone you knew longer or someone you work for, <laughs> but you tried hurting us. That's why we just cannot be trusty and friendly with you. Can we start over? I asked and saw Nico going red from anger. Both of them smiled. Yes, I like the sound of that. Let's start over. Jesus, stop changing your mind so fast. Forget the words, the gods, the camps, blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh, Reyna is also there. Okay. I can't believe you, Percy. You were my role model, but now I hate you. I really hate you. Nico screamed and I, and ran out with Will hot at his heels. I looked at Percy, concerned. I think this might be a bit homophobic. Everyone turned to Jesus. I recommend you to, but go to the police. They'll help you get a house and all. Go to your parents if they're alive. And of shouting her commands, turning away from Nico and Will. Remember, start over, Percy continued. Give us a small break away from the greed stuff. And you guys, to think over what happened. Just a break, not parting. But small break to clear our mind of what happened this day. Once everybody walks out of Olympus to string the key to this hell spot, I walked up to them before leaving and started a new life, finding love and living a happy life. I ran up to Annabeth. Sorry again, Percy, Annabeth. I'm forever grateful for what you did to us. But I'm moving. I hope we can still stay in touch, but I want to have a fresh start away from everything, to find joy and friendship where I don't need to be reminded of what I, I believed and did just for Susan Artemis to see me as good. Thank you. See you later, sis. You too, brother. This this was my mother's old phone. She wanted to throw it away. But you should use it before you can get a new one. Use it for good. The password is, enter random password. Why don't you just come up with these? Percy said, handing me a white phone. I smiled and hugged him again before walking off to the train station. Oh, and she goes to Los Angeles, of course, because angels. Chapter 10, and I am finally relieved from my burden of having to read this fanfic. 10 years later. Piper's point of view for some reason. Hi there. Okay. I am soon publishing a new cook recipe book. Sure. Jason's with me the whole way. And the two fussy balls of ours, even Salm. Salm has been taking singing lessons for one year and loves it. He'll have his first concert in a month. So he's excited and nervous. And Jason has a new man he has to defend to the judge. It's about a woman who mentioned religion in class. The school found it inappropriate. So he kind of wants to defend her. We got three dogs four years ago. Okay, why do we care? I'm glad Person Annie um, helped us uh, with our lives, blah blah blah. I'm gonna have a child in three months and we're adopting an eight-year-old too. His name is Noah. Of course it is. I'd say I'm glad that all the Greek stuff is over. And then let's see what Talia's doing. It's been 10 years since the war against the gods. I'm a devoted Christian woman now. I'm 28 and a famous motorcycle racer, gym trainer, and nutritionist. I think this person doesn't know that people usually just have one job, especially when it's like these kinds of jobs. You can't just have all of those things. I also started dating Leo Valdez, you know, repair boy. This to me <laughs> seems like the typical shipping of a very clearly gay man with a lesbian woman. Like these two would never in their lifetime date each other. Calypso was a devil too. Oh, of course, but I met him in Los Angeles working in a forge making everyday things. Then he asked me out. I said, yes, all my friends knew we were dating. In fact, we've been married for three years. Leo, of course, is also a devoted Christian and nearly immediately started going to the same church as I did. I still do go to the same church as before, nine blah blah blah. And of course, she's a singer and woman's study group leader. She has a lot of time, besides her three jobs. My daughter, of course, Danielle, is two and a half years old. She can already talk a little, ride a bike, play blah, I don't care. Well, Piper and Jason have been married for 70 years. They had two kids. Uh, who cares? Oh, and Piper is a successful restaurant owner. Then there's Hazel and Frank. They've been married for five years. They have a four-year-old son, Joseph, who loves church and Sunday schools. Of course he does. And reads the Bible with Hazel daily. Frank works in the library and teaches Joseph to read. Okay, then there's Reina. She's a successful company CEO, always busy, but she's a very dedicated woman. Her company makes technology and it makes millions. Good for her, honestly. 
but she invests the money for the poor and for orphanage. She's single, but she prefers to have her heart fully for Jesus. As do I. <laughs> and then there's Hannah Beth and Percy, married for 10 years. They now live in Arizona. They have three children, Esther, eight years old, Deborah, seven years old, and Job, six years old. They introduce them proudly to everyone. Annabeth is an architect, but helps all her three children with school. Percy's a fully trained lifeguard for over five years. <laughs> he wants to save lives from the sea and drowning. Good, good for him. Then there's Clarice and Chris Rodriguez. They're married for four years, don't have children. Chris is a farmer, and Clarice is a martial arts trainer. Oh. Connor and Travis, they're famous YouTubers, and Kitty is a gardener in a flower shop. Travis and Kitty have been married about six, eight, about six years. I heard Nico and Will have gone to prison. I am not gonna read that, but oh my god. So that's it, that's how it ends. They all have good lives, they're happy, married to each other. And Nico and Will, who just happen to be the only known LGBTQ plus characters by the end of Heroes of Olympus, which is what I'm guessing this person read, they are in prison because they are At the beginning, it was just fun and games, but then it just took a very homophobic turn there at the end because if it had been anyone else, you know, it could have been Clarice and Chris because we don't even know them that much and they don't have to like Percy and Annabeth. But no, it's Will and Nico, of course. This person has a big storm coming when they read The Trials of Apollo, which I'm sure they wouldn't do based on what I just read. I thought that was like 10 minutes long and it was 40 minutes and I've been reading for like over an hour and 30 minutes and my voice is gone. Oh, I don't even know what to say like after reading that. If I had to suffer through it, then you had to suffer through it. So please leave a like if you like this video, comment down below. If you like this, comment down below. Just whatever. Just thoughts and prayers for me and for my mental health after this i know this video clearly makes you want to subscribe so click that bell button to get notifications every time i post a new video i post videos just like this every single friday and i guess i'll see you guys next time uh hopefully for something a little bit better than this <laughs> bye <laughs>